Hello my darlings, it's Zui here, and today I have a very long episode for you. This is Daddy Part 5. Daddy is one of my more popular series, and in the comment section you will find the playlist leading you to all episodes. Uh, you can pause the video right there and uh, watch all of them in order. If you have already seen the other parts, great, then you can jump right into this one. But before we do so, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, watch the video until the end. And on screen you will right now see a suggestion, so to speak, on what you can comment if you have no idea what to comment. Uh, specifically if you have no idea what to comment, because I absolutely love reading your comments. Yes, I'm one of the few YouTubers that actually read the comments, mostly because I don't get that many yet. Um, if you comment my suggested comment with all the important search terms, I promise I give you a little heart. <laughs> now, please enjoy the show. Korogiri had dropped you off a few hours before you were meant to visit Bakugo at UA High. The reason behind it, he didn't disclose, but in all honesty it was obvious. Like everyone in the league, he was a wanted man. And someone with a difficult to hide quirk like his meant he was a walking liability if he were to walk around in public. Especially since UA was ground zero of the League's attempts at... What exactly? You didn't know. You just knew that 90% of your family were the bad guys. Similar to the first time you had left your secure home, your Nomo was trotting behind you. There was one thing you were really glad about though. Despite you having spent most of your life on a secluded island, your access to TV and internet had allowed you to be able to blend in with normal people. After all, it would have been very awkward if you'd be running around asking, what's this? What's that? Just talking to strangers was weird. In fact, you would have shot Bakugo down that day if it wasn't for the sudden urge to have more reasons to leave the manor you called home. Right now you were enjoying a strawberry milkshake at a small ice cream parlor in one of the deeper parts of Camino Ward, while curiously staring at your Nomo. A realization had hit you. You knew that Nomos were people who had been forcefully given multiple quirks. What were the quirks in your Nomo? Eventually the creature noticed your staring. He was wearing a white black trench coat. His clawed hands were covered with thick leather gloves, and a large black fedora covered half of his face. He tilted his head in a questioning manner, awaiting your inevitable question. What's your quirks? You eventually asked. Even though you couldn't see his eyes, you knew they were rapidly blinking as the cocks in his brain began to form the answer. <laughs> Never asked. You deadpan. Don't counter question me. The giant scratched the back of his head and thought. No more knows. You took a long sip of your shake. So? Quirks. Shrug. Nullification. Strength. <sighs> Regeneration. You had trouble articulating the next word. Adre Adrenaline rush. Dry skin. You blinked in confusion. Dry skin? No more strength. Enhances when wet skin. Dry absorbs water. You suppressed a giggle and refrained from calling him a living sponge. The rest of his quirks were self explanatory, so you quickly dropped the subject as it seemed to genuinely hurt his brain. 
So instead you opened your phone to check the time. It was almost 4 p.m. We should get going, you said. Bakugo's waiting for us. The monster nodded and you two got up. When you two arrived at the imposing grounds of UA, you were greeted with a closed gate. And for a split second you considered ordering your Nomu to break through the gate by bending its iron beams. But just as you thought about the potential consequences, your phone rang. It was Katsuki. Hey, he said. You coming? I was pretty much on the dot at 4 p.m. I'm already at the gate. Okay. Uh, thing opens with student or teacher ID since an incident with, well, uh, with, with a sarcastic tone you sighed. My people? Yeah. Hearing that felt like a kick in the stomach. It's fine. I announced you'd be coming. Just wait a minute, I come get you. Two minutes later you saw him appear from the school building. He waved before jogging over. Through the gate he greeted you. Eh, sorry about the wait. You shrugged and smiled. It wasn't that long. Then he looked at the monster. Is he... going to... do something? You turned to look at Nomu, who was staring with a blank expression at a ladybug that had landed on his coat. Does he look like he will? Bakugo shrugged. Well, uh... The boy remembered his class's encounters with these unpredictable monstrosities. You sure you have him under control? You chuckled and turned to face the creature. Hey, Nomo, you said, smiling. Immediately, the monster said jerk towards you. Wanna watch the pony show? Slowly, the giant nodded, and after selecting a random episode, you gave it to him. Bakoko scratched his chin. I think I recognize this theme song. You shrugged in response. Eh, show jumped the shark when they turned one of the main characters into a goddess or something. Bakugo laughed. Damn, now I remember. Mom watches it with Dad all the time. They say it reminds them of their childhood. A dark thought crept in your head, and quietly you whispered to your boyfriend. Do you think maybe that's why he likes it so much? Bakugo blinked. Don't... don't have such dark thoughts, sweetie. He stopped and blushed, and her smile turned smug. Did you just give you a pet name? Uh, yeah, he grunted. With an embarrassed look, he then proceeded to open the gate. Well, uh, come in, you two. After thanking him, you followed him to his dorms. Around this time, most of our class are still studying in the main building. So, should be just us and my friends who are desperately trying to meet you. <laughs> Bakugo chuckled before opening the main door. Your heart was pounding as you walk through the wide hallways of the dorm. They look much bigger on the inside, with windows pretty much everywhere. Friendly chatter came from the corner room that quickly died down once the three of you entered. There were three people, a girl with pink skin and almost entirely black eyes, a muscular boy with red hair, and a uh, one with blonde hair wearing a very sick leather jacket. Everyone's attention first went to Bakugo, whom they greeted with delight, before everyone was completely taken aback by the giant creature behind him and you. So, uh, who's your big friend? asked the redhead. Bakugo scoffed, then pointed at you. This is my girlfriend. And then he pointed at Nomu. This is her, uh, her... Servant, you added. The monster remained silent, 
with an awkward expression, you said, just, just ignore him, if possible. The guy in the leather jacket grinned. I don't know about you guys, but I find it sick to be close to one of those things without it wanting to rip my face off. Rip your face off? You asked with concern. The boy grinned, but before he could say anything, Bakugo barked. She said ignore him, Kaminari. The boy shrugged. Sure thing, bro. After this admittedly weird introduction, you went to sit on one of the empty seats next to Bakugo. The overall atmosphere being pleasant. At least that's how you perceived it. Bakugo's friends were joking around, but you couldn't help but notice the occasional glance towards the corner where Yonomu was sitting and watching his pony show. Were they anticipating something? During a moment of calm, you asked, just so you would not just sit there quietly the entire time. So, uh, how's hero life? Bakugo's friends looked at each other for a moment before the girl, Mina, and Kaminari began to chuckle. <laughs> well, Kaminari and I don't have an agency yet, so we really can't do anything. I thought agencies are optional, you asked. It's, uh... Very technical, said the redhead named Kirishima, before grinning and saying, Cause I'm in one and I can tell you what exactly they're doing. Plus, we're still high schoolers. We're nowhere near going pro. Bakugo grunted something at the palm of his fist. <laughs> Don't worry about him, chuckled Kaminari. He failed his provisional hero license exam. Hearing that, Bakugo slammed the table. That was a technicality! He shouted. And his friends laughed in unison. Sure thing, buddy. Then Kaminari lead forward. It's his explosive personality that cost him the victory. For that pun, I'm gonna kill you. In front of your girlfriend? Challenged the blonde. Bakugo gave you a look of anticipation. Taking it back, you said, Uh, do it outside if you must? You said confused. Then Bakugo stood up and grabbed his laughing friend by his jacket, dragging him outside. The rest of his friends were laughing like crazy at the entire situation. Is he really going to, you know? You asked. Nah said Kirishima. After everyone calmed down, the red had continued. You still want to know about agencies? You nodded. Well, they do all the paperwork. There are a lot of rules heroes have to abide by, or they will be marked as vigilantes, which is really what you don't want. He shrugged. Because, like, they are breaking the law, and there are many shows, especially coming from America, that satirize a world where heroes either don't have many rules or none at all. It's actually quite terrifying if you think about it. Oh yeah, I think I watched one of these shows, you added. Plus, agencies give you insurance. Being a hero can lead to a lot of injuries. Mina sighed. Oh, I wanna be in an agency. Which agency are you in? You asked Kirishima. And the boy grinned. Fat Gums. He's an amazing mentor. You smiled softly. The lighthearted banter was refreshing. While we are on the topic of hero stuff, what's your quirk? Mine is acid. She demonstrated by holding her hand out and shooting a small fountain of grey liquid. Don't worry, I can control how acidic it is. This right now is just really sour water. <laughs> Your eyes widened. Wow, that's cool. Thanks. Next was Kirishima. I can armor up. He fist bumped his own hands while turning his body to stone. Bakugos is explosions, but you probably knew that already, laughed Mina. So, what's yours? 
You blushed. I don't like to talk about it. Then again, this may be your opportunity to find out the true meaning of your quirk. But, okay. It's called Scarlet Empress and I can heat up a person's body temperature. You left out the detail of killing your own mother with it. Kirishima thought for a moment. Sounds interesting. Can we see it in action? shouted Mina excitedly. You haven't used your quirk since it manifested. Uh, how? At the gym. You heard Bakugo shout from the entryway. Oh, hey, greeted Mina. Since when have you been listening? Bakugo shrugged and scoffed. When Shitty has showed off his dumb quirk. The three of you laughed. Come on, it's empty around this time and no one will notice, said Kirishima while quickly getting on his feet and clapping his hands. After you and your group tried to leave the dorms, however, Nomo suddenly jolted up, barring your exit. Let it go? He asked. I yeah, said a very intimidated Mina. But feeling no more come with. I don't think it's a good idea. If a teacher sees it, then all hell's gonna break loose, whispered Kirishima into your ear. Uh, whatever, grunted Bakugo at the monster. Fine, you said. No, no, you're coming with us. The giant nodded and let you and your friends pass, then he slowly trotted after the group. Ten minutes later you were in front of the big training gym. You're going to lose your mind when you see the amazing stuff in here, chuckled the pink girl. Using your student ID, they opened the iron door to the interior. Once inside, your jaw dropped. It was as if someone cut out a landscape and dropped it inside a building. Jesus, what's the budget for this school? You shouted out loud. Uh-huh, came from Bakugo. No thought about it. Kishima shrugged. Probably some government contract thing. Isn't Japan controlled by Germany or something? It's called the Global Defense Effort, said Mina. And that actually makes a lot of sense. Then she clapped her hands. Now, let's get ready. I want to see what happens. First was Kishima. The two of you walked a few meters away from the others. Nomu meanwhile took off his fedora to intently stare at the happenings. Noticing this, Mina took an extra step away from him, just to be sure. His loose, leathery skin hung over the sides of his head, making it look like he was wrapped in a hood. Kirishima activated his quirk before challengingly smirking at you. Go on, if I can reach you before I pass out from your quirk, I win. <laughs> Three, shouted Mina. Two, one. As soon as Kirishima moved, you raised your right hand, and immediately he stopped in his tracks, as if paralyzed. He fell on his side. You furrowed your brows. What the... You walked over to him. Now that your quirk was turned off, he slowly regained the ability to move. Uh, he mumbled. Felt more than just a fever. You helped him up. It was like my body hardened beyond what it should be capable of, reaching the point where I couldn't move myself. Weird. He waved the others over and repeated what he just told you. Didn't you say you just make a fever or something? Asked Mina. I... Yeah, I... I'm just as confused as you guys. Fine, me next then, said Mina with a grin. Nomu growled, but not loud enough for anyone to hear. 
After Kirishima and Bakugo took a few steps away from the field, you asked one last time. Are you absolutely sure about this? Mina made finger pistols. As sure as I'll ever be. You both raised one hand each. But... Something was wrong. Very wrong. Instead of a casket of liquid, only a small stream of acid left Mina's hand before she collapsed, convulsing and screaming in pain. Everyone, including Nomu, rushed over to her. What the fuck happened? shouted Bakugo. I, I don't know, you cried. The two boys were trying to keep her steady so they could see what was happening to her. Once she was on her back, Kirishima grabbed the hand Amina was clutching to look at it. The flesh of her palm had turned black, with a patch of red bleeding flesh around it. Holy fuck! He cried out. Panic was filling your body. We need to get her to the nurse office, pronto! Falling on your knees, your ears were ringing. This couldn't be happening. Tears began to run down your face, and you shouted for Nomu to help before your mind finally allowed you to black out. The last thing you saw was the silhouette of the giant picking up the injured girl. An entire hour had passed before you awoke. You had found yourself inside a rather sterile-looking room, lying in a white bed. You were still wearing the same clothes. To your right stood Nomu, unmoving. You raised your body, only for the memory of what had happened to flood your mind. And you felt sick. Ah, uh, the other patient is awake, it seems, croaked a voice from somewhere to your left. Where... where am I? You asked. Next, you noticed in the bed to your left was Mina, seemingly asleep. Bandages were wrapped around her arms, and both legs were suspended and bandaged up as well. Next to her sat Kishima, who just nodded in your direction with a forced smile. Baku himself was sitting on a stool next to your bed, looking at the ground, unresponsive. The person who had called you, the other patient, had been an elderly woman who quickly hit Bakugo on the head with a walking stick. Let me sit, young man. I need to talk with her. Bakugo scoffed, but stood up. Crossing his arms, he walked over to the other side of the bed, leaning against the unmoving monster as if he was a wall. Your big fella had brought you and the pink girl into my infirmary. These two boys screaming and crying for my help right behind him. She spoke softly yet sternly. Something about a quirk-related accident. Is she alive? You asked cautiously. If she wasn't, I wouldn't be talking to you like this, would I? You shrugged, not sure of what to do or say. This is important, my dear said the woman. Did you lie about the nature of your quirk, or did you really not know what would happen if you used it? Tears began to run down your face. I, I swear I didn't know. I only used it once when it manifested. The old lady switched her gaze towards Bakugo. Now, now, there's no need to curse. And besides... You could have lied to me to protect your girlfriend. 
the old lady returned her attention back to you. If it is okay with you, I'd like to make a quick quirk evaluation, so I know what happened here and whether or not it is your fault or not. Sh sure you said. Uh, first, I need to know the answers to a few family-related questions. And then tell me what you think your quirk is before I make the physical exam. After going over to her desk and taking out a notepad, she returned to your side. What is your father's quirk? All for one. The woman blinked and made a confused noise. And then she looked up at Baku. Uh, where did you find this girl again? He shrugged. I was her out on a date at the mall. And now we're in a relationship. The old lady shrugged. Well, I will refrain from commenting on that. And she took a few notes. Next question. What is your mother's quirk? You shook your head. I don't know. I was too young. She added a few more notes. Then she proceeded to ask your entire life history, which wasn't that long, luckily. Meanwhile, Mina had woken up. She and Kirishima were listening intently. When you reached the part where you met Bakugo and why you were at the mall to begin with, the old lady raised one hand to make you stop. That's enough. Uh, after seeing Mina's wounds and your explanation, I have a theory. Uh, can you walk? You weren't feeling dizzy anymore, so you nodded. Uh, great. Uh, then follow me, young lady. On the slightly wobbly legs, you followed her into the side room, meant for examinations. It only took about ten minutes. Consisting of her taking measurements of your body after you undressed and checking for any mutations you may have Testing your blood pressure Taking some blood samples She was especially interested in your hands shoulders and head After she was done and you put your clothes back on she wrote up a storm in her notebook Meanwhile you return to the others with anticipation, Kirishima blurted out, So, what's your real quirk? You shrugged. You were in there with Recovery Girl for like ten minutes, granted Bakugo, who was still leaning against your monster. I... I, I don't know, okay? I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Hey, don't be, said Mina weakly. Recovery Girl is one hell of a nurse, just... Give me a day or two. So, so you aren't mad at me? Mina shrugged. Well, while I was writhing in pain, yeah, I was, but... Now, now I'm just curious about the truth of your quirk. Honestly, you didn't care about your quirk right now. You didn't even care about the girl whose hands and apparently feet you had mangled. You were just... Worried about your relationship with Bakugo? Would he break up with you over this? And why were you having such selfish thoughts right now? With a metaphorical tail between your legs, you walked back to your bed and sat down on it. No one spoke a word until another ten minutes later, the old woman, recovery girl, re-entered the room. She slowly approached you, gave you her notes. It is not up to me to announce your quirk to the world, and I will also refrain from telling the global defense effort of your quirk. They surely would be interested in it, but I feel as if enough damage was caused today. And I don't want to be responsible for you vanishing. You skipped the calculations she went through, and went straight for the answer. Right. No. It couldn't be. Scarlet Empress. You said in shock. It... What? Barked Bakugo. 
It disables a person's natural resistance to their own quirk. Bakugo looked at his own hands, feeling a rush of relief come over him. If he were to challenge you in a fight, his arms surely were a goner. I, 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 I swear I didn't know. Well, for now I think we are done here. Recovery girl now turned towards Mina. You will stay here until tomorrow. I can't guarantee there won't be any scars, though, but I'm positive you can use your quirk again. Soon. Just for now, your skin will be very sensitive. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. Said the pink girl. No more. No. That thing happen. I feel it. Baku was taken back by the sudden words from the monster. Wait, so you did no one didn't say anything? Came Bakugo's accusation. No more feeling. Smell. Fear. No, not no, lady quirk. Mm, not no more new lady afraid of hurting friend. Friend, good friend, for not abandoning lady or accident. Ah, oh, thanks, big guy," said Mina. So, uh, what now? He asked with both concern and curiosity. You're coming with me, said Bakugo. While making moves to leave the infirmary, you followed him with a pounding heart. Once outside, he pressed you up against the wall, his fist crashing right next to your head. Your eyes widened in fear. I have no idea if I believe all the shit you've just said, but... I really want to. It's not your fault. I think. There was desperation in his voice. He really didn't want you to be the bad guy here. But his hero intuition was telling him the opposite. He just couldn't get over the bias of your upbringing. The infirmary door opened suddenly and Nomo stepped outside, and then blinked. Thinking he barged into an intimate moment, he quickly closed the door again. Ah, fine. Festival is next week. Don't be late. And with that, he turned around to leave. While still in earshot, you asked, Are we... are we still a couple? He stopped in his tracks. If I were to break up with you, you wouldn't need to ask, because I'd make it clear. He then continued walking. <sighs> Love you. Was the last thing he said before rounding a corner. <laughs>